Hey everyone, I'm Justin Fiedler and this is Dirt Tracker Conversations. On this bonus episode of the show, I'm joined by Craig Kinzer's World of Outlaws Sprint Car Series crew chief, Mikey Kemper. Mikey has been on the road with the Outlaws for many years, working for Tony Stewart Racing and the Kinzers. These days, he and Craig have to battle night in and night out against some of the toughest competition in dirt racing, and they are doing it with limited resources. We talked about the upcoming Outlaw weekend, his career, working with Craig, and a whole lot more. So without further ado, here's my conversation with Mikey Kemper. Mike, I guess let's start out with uh, with most recent events and actually where you're sitting right now, not too far from where you guys got your first top 10 of the season. But how is it being at East Bay, a place that the series hasn't been in a very, very long time? Oh, it was cool to see all the people there and, and the stands packed. And it's been uh, last time I was there was 04 with uh, Dan Wasowski and Jimmy Carr. The track was way different then, but no, it was it was cool to be back and to see how packed the grandstands are places we haven't been for a long time. You guys are getting ready to go to two tracks also that are going to be new for you guys. And, and when you guys do that, when you go to a new track, how do you, you know, what, what are you pulling out of the notebook for setups? Like, are you, are you guessing based on what you kind of think is similar or, or how does that work with you putting together your package? Yeah, we just kind of base it off tracks you've been to, kind of take the shape and, and the size of it. And the, the banking there and kind of judge it off other tracks we race at throughout the year and just kind of go off them notes to get a starting point. To where we think we should be, and then kind of go from there after hot laps. You guys are still in Florida right now. When are you going to kind of head on and, and get to the get down to uh, I guess what Louisiana or Mississippi? Yeah, Mississippi. Uh, we'll leave tomorrow sometime. It's about eleven hours up there, so head out of here tomorrow and start heading that way. And and what you'll be on the airplane, and you've got your full crew of guys right to uh, yeah. drive the truck for you. Yeah, I wish I wish that was the way it worked for us, but no, I'll be. Got the truck cleaned up today and trailer, got it all rinsed off and washed and everything serviced and get in the truck and get behind the wheel and, and drive up there tomorrow. I love it. When, uh, you know, we're just coming off of Volusia. Obviously, you do the two nights at Dirt Car Nationals and then, you, you know, you have this month off with all this crazy schedule stuff and then go back to Volusia. As difficult as Volusia can be on equipment, is is that a place that you're just kind of trying to escape without hurting anything too bad? Yeah, yeah, that place is, is really hard on especially motors and the cars and stuff. And usually when we go there, we just try to, it's hard to start the season out there with everything fresh and you got just so hard on everything. So we just try to, we want to run good and, and want to run top 10, top fives and even try to get a win. But you just, if you can roll back in the trailer and, and leave the week without blowing any motors up, it's kind of a, a good sign to start the year out. Hey, explain to me why that place is so difficult on engines. I know you know it has a lot to do with how big the racetrack is and air conditions and things like that. But but from where you guys' perspective, what's so difficult there about that place? Uh, just like you said, the, the you're wide open all the time around there, and you're at sea level. And majority of the time at night when it cools off, you're below sea level, so the air is real good, and you got to keep putting fuel to the motors. But you can only go so so much, and you can't do any more. And you're just never you're never out of the gas letting the motors breathe like we do at other places like Knoxville you let them breathe some and, and grow but there you're kind of in the in the throttle majority of the time around the track so it never gets a chance to take a break uh, I, I want to kind of jump back to your kind of history and stuff and and for as long as I can remember at least since I've been around the outlaws you've worked you know with the Kinzers and for the Kinzers and stuff and and I guess at this point how many years has it been uh Came out in 2004 uh, with Jimmy Carr and Danny Lasoski on the 20 car, the TSR. And I was with them until I was at TSR until the 2010. I came down when Steve co or Craig come back down and drive for Steve. That's when I left there and, and come and start working for Craig and Steve. So. And you've been full time on the road the whole time? Yeah. You know, so I what? took a year and a half off and went. I was still working on race cars, but we're all, I was on the USAC team with with Levi Jones but after that I've been on since 2010 been doing that whole deal in terms of lifestyle for for a guy that's on the road as many races as, as you are and, and have been over the course of your career is it different much now than it was then have things changed all that much or is it still pretty much the same uh it's it's still similar to what it was back then it's not much has changed we're still we're gone a lot still and the lifestyle is not 
not the best, especially if you have a family and, and kids. And so it's, it's hard on the personal life, but it's lifestyle is still kind of the same. When I first came out, you're gone, you're racing all the time and traveling and in the, as much as we've, we've been racing, not last year, but the year before and stuff, we traveled a lot. So years past, we were able to kind of go do stuff and kind of sightsee and, and go other places and hang out. But with all the, the schedule the way it has been in the last couple of years, we haven't been able to kind of enjoy yourself as much as did when I first came on the road. How do you keep up and have a family life or have a personal life with friends? Like, is it even possible? Uh, that's the hard part. Uh, hard part is when you get home you got to kind of separate your work from life from family life so as soon as you leave the shop you got to kind of let it go and, and then just enjoy them the time you have with your kids or, or girlfriend or wife whatever you have to kind of relax and then when they can come to the races or you're nearby they can come and hang out and see everything and then on weekends when we don't race or during the winter try to spend as much time with your family and stuff go do stuff and actually live like a normal life, I say. Uh, you know, one of the big things that we've had the last two years, you know, at least last season and, and now this season is there's no California swing. So I know you guys would be gone for what a month or a month and a half to do that swing. And, and now you're not going to do that. So is that make it easier? Is it, is it more comfortable? Is it, you know, what, what does that look like from a team perspective when you know you don't have to go to the West coast for a month? Uh, it's financially, it, it's a lot better for not hotel rooms and stuff, but it, you don't got to carry as much equipment with you if you know you're not going out there. And kind of like after Florida there, we came down to Tampa here where we've been for the last month and a half almost in Volusia and kind of hung out down here waiting to see what was going on. But it's the West Coast. is We like going out there because we got good friends and, and partners out there like Southern Pacific Farms and them. They put us up and we stay out there and have a good time with them and hang out and makes it makes the road life a lot easier we got people like that that'll take you in and take care of you and feed you and kind of make it feel like a, a home uh, yeah it's like one of the things i feel like i've heard over the years from from crew guys and teams is like when they're on the road it, you know you've got a, a shop here or a friend there that's got some space for you how important are those relationships that you'll have a place to maybe get a home cooked meal or park the rig or work inside when you're when you're on the road during the season oh uh, it's very important to me it's it's nice to be able to come like we're here at Captain Jack and Kathy's here in Tampa, just down the road from East Bay. And we've been here for a month and a half and they've treated us like family and fed us every day and let us do, let us borrow the vehicles that we needed to and took care of us. And it's when you go places, especially when you're gone for a long time, it's nice to have people that will help you out and do stuff for you. Or, or if you need something for your truck and trailer or t-shirt trailer, they can find, help find it out for you and get it fixed for you. So it's, to me, it, it's that's the important part of our deal is we got a lot of people that help us out. And it's kind of become family with a lot of places we go and a lot of our people that help us. If I remember correctly, you used to drive yourself, right? Yeah, yeah, I did years ago. Do you do you miss it at all? Yeah, at times. At times I miss it. And I wish I could do it still, but I just, when I was racing and a kid and stuff, I didn't have the, the financial background money to to do everything and like i wanted to after i've been out on the road for a while so that's why i came back out and like i said if i can't if i can't race this is the next best thing working on them and, and being being a part of it is there ever a thought about maybe tying craig up in the trailer and sneaking on his fire suit and jumping in there for a night uh some nights when nights when we're struggling and, and we get, get upset at each other it kind of goes through my mind but now it, it's it's all good it's he does a hell of a job and for what we got and what we got to work with, we, we do what we can. So you, you and Craig have been together for so long now. What's that relationship like? Is it like brothers? Is it really good friends? Is it, you know, what, what does that look like? Oh, uh, it's like brothers. We, we've been together for a long time and, and we get mad at each other and we know when each other get mad at, when I get mad at him, he knows. And then when he's upset with me, I know. And so we kind of take it with a grain of salt, and move on and, and, Next day we we'll talk about it, or later that night we'll talk about it and try to figure it out. And it's 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 fun. It has its moments, but I wouldn't have it any other way right now. So, what's your your you know your kind of feedback process with Craig? Like, are you guys making decisions together? You know, is he just telling you what he's feeling, and then you're making decisions? Like, how does that process work as you guys are working on setups through the course of a night? 
uh, it's his feedback too. He I'm trying to keep him as comfortable as he can in the car to where he, he feels comfortable to, to run it hard and on the cushion or where he needs to be. So I try to get input from him to, to keep him comfortable and let him know what, what we're doing to the car. So it doesn't something that doesn't spook him right away on like lining up with a green flag or, or takes him a couple laps to get used to it. He kind of has it in his mind. If I tighten the car up a lot, he knows it's going to be tight for the first few laps of the race and then kind of adjust for it and then go from there. Do you guys have that type of relationship where, you know, when you watch him on track and then he comes off, do you, do you already kind of have an idea about what he's going to say? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. I, from what the car looks like and then how he drives it and what he comes in and says, it's, I can kind of gauge from there and then he'll tell me a little bit and we'll go from there, but it's pretty close to where, what he says and what the car looks like. We can, I kind of adjust for it. And sometimes, Sometimes I do stuff without telling them just to, just to surprise them. <laughs> <laughs> is there ever a situation where you guys are just completely off where he comes off and says one thing and you're like, no, I saw this. Like, is, is that possible or does that happen? Oh yeah. It happens, it happens quite a bit, especially with the way everything's been, the tire package we have and things been going on. It's just car looks one way. He says it feels another way. And then I talk to somebody else and, or people that are with us helping us and, and they agree with me the way it looked. And so I got to go back to him and try to figure out what he did getting into the corner or something to try to, to get it to where it's a little bit better, but now it's the way everything is right now. It's, it's very easy to, to be off from what the driver feels to what we can see on the standing outside the racetrack. I, I'm always curious about this. So like in, in my NASCAR dealings, like you, you always have that, that one joke where a driver's complaining on, on the racetrack, on the radio, they come in, you put the hood up and you kind of bang around for a few minutes and pretend like you're doing something. You shut the hood and they go back out and they're like, man, this thing's way better. And you didn't do anything. Does that stuff like, is that, is that happened? Is that something you do? Like, you know, are, are there times where you kind of try to keep the drivers out of their own heads like that? Yeah, no, it happens quite a bit. And it's, it ain't nothing strange. You gotta, you, you gotta tell the driver what they. You don't want to lie to them, but you gotta tell the driver what they wanna. They wanna hear you're doing or what they think is right to make them feel like okay, I can go in and drive it the way I need to be and go with it. But, but no, nah, it's it's we do it every now and then. Just gotta tell them I did something and or move a wrench around and, and don't really do anything. I'm, you know, you, you guys are, are in a unique situation. You know, you, you are racing with, you know, one of the toughest series on probably on the planet. Um, and you're doing it with, you know, not as many, you know, not quite as much resources as a lot of the companies and teams and stuff around you, but how do you find ways to kind of, you know, fill the gap, you know, are there, you know, are there advantages that you have are there things that you could find without big budgets and things like that to, you know, things like that to still be able to, to have speed and, and have good performances. Uh, no, that's where we kind of struggle with the, the motor program and stuff, not being able to, to keep up on the motor side of it. But Craig's uncle, Randy and, and Galen Fox and them, they try to help us out as much as they can to, to get the motor program going. It's just, like you said, it's, it's financials and trying to find somebody to spend the money to do it. And we do it with what we have. We make it off what the car makes and puts back in and we race, but we got great partners like, Joe Devin at DRC, he's awesome. He watches every night and, and calls. We talk talk about every other day or every day when we're racing and trying to figure out what we need to do to get stuff better and, and try to talk to other people too that he knows that's been involved in racing. And then I kind of bounce ideas off other people and then stuff trying to get trying to get where we where we need to be without without the money. Are there certain tracks on the schedule that you go to that you kind of are like, okay, those are places that the motor doesn't matter as much and we can be successful there. I mean, is that short tracks or is there track types like that? Uh, it's, it's mainly short tracks. And when we got all these like three eights, like East Bay and like coming up this weekend, the way the tracks look and three eights and page and, and all the shorter tracks, I, I, we can run good. We can run with everybody and qualify and be decent. It's just, we come to the like Knoxville, Eldora, Grove, and Port Royal, where you got to have the motors. It's it hurts yourself going in there. You, you know you don't have the motor to do it, and you don't, so your head's kind of down, and you're beating yourself against the wall trying to get the the car to act better to to make up for it, but you really can't because it's just just time. 
How do you kind of deal with that like mental slog of the season of it's, you know, you know, you're going to be up against it, but you're still going to battle. Like, how do you kind of keep yourself up in those down moments? I just, just look at it. We're doing what we love and, and we're thankful to be doing it and, and got great partners behind us. And it's better than sitting in an office every day, eight to five. And, and we just we love it and like doing it with each other and we just keep going up and down the road. Hopefully we'll catch a break one day and, and something will come along and it, help us out in, in the racing program. And, and so that's what we look forward to all the time is just do what we can do and, and perform the best we can and, and just keep going on about our business and, and keeping to ourselves and do what we can. Yeah. How, uh, I, I know Craig there for a while was like super big on the fitness stuff. Is he still, is he still pretty hard up on that? Yeah. Yeah. He's been running about every day down here working out and stuff. So he's, he's still, he's still doing good with that and still in shape. So, that's after the got the sponsor there a couple of years ago and, and that kicked him in high gear. And, and ever since then, he's been, he's been doing it every day. So do you think that makes a, a, that. a big, a big difference for him? Oh yeah. Yeah. Physically in the car and, and he doesn't he just looks better sitting in the car and driving and stuff. You just feel better. So it, it, it's a big difference. Tell me about last year and, and kind of dealing with all of the, the COVID stuff. Like you guys are, you know, not sure about schedule on a week to week basis. And, you know, some places you're wearing masks and there's fans, no fans. Like how was that to kind of deal with through the course of the year? Oh, it was, it was hard at first. because It was, we didn't know what was going on. So we just kind of hung out. And once we got to like Knoxville there for that first race, it was, it was an eerie feeling having no fans in the stand. That was something I didn't like to see even outdoor when we ran there. It was, didn't like that. The fans would make the whole night, but certain places we went where you had to wear the mask, it kind of threw you off guard. And especially when you had to wear it all night, trying to work and breathe. And it just made it, made it tough, but we had to deal with it to do what we needed to do to, to get racing. So. What are you kind of hearing about this season? Is it going to be kind of more of the same business as usual? Like obviously we've lost California at this point, but you know, for the remainder of the schedule, do you think it'll be pretty normal? Yeah, I think so. From the sounds of everything we've been kind of hearing and watching what everybody sees on the news and, talking to other people in areas it sounds like it's it's going to start opening up more and, and we'll be able to start doing more stuff and maybe hopefully in the fall get back out to the west coast to get out there again are there certain places this year that you're looking forward to going to or are there certain places on any year that you look forward to going to uh just i like going to the like eldora we like going there we ran good there just uh peebly and kokomo is good and it's just i like going to them all some places it's not as good, but it's, but I like just getting out and racing now. And then once we get in the swing of things, kind of get, get rolling again, you get in a rhythm and the day-to-day -day maintenance again and, and the late hours and traveling, you just got to get back in the swing of it all to, to get rolling with everything. How much is Steve is still involved with you guys at this point? Uh, not a lot, really. It's just Craig and I kind of run the whole team. We, we took over everything, the finances and, so it comes out of all of our, our, our pocket. We pay for everything. And he comes down to the shop. It's still at his, where his, the race shop was at when he was racing right next to his house. He comes down when we're home and hangs out and, and help wants to help us and throws ideas out and, and still talks to quite a few people to try to try to get things figured out on, on motor side of stuff and, and car side. And, but he doesn't, he still has the itch to race. So he doesn't like being there all the time. <laughs> So he just kind of stays away now. When you kind of look back over the last, whatever, 15 or 20 years that you've been involved, has sprint car technology advanced all that much? Are you still trying to kind of do the same things with the chassis and set the car up and to do certain things or have there been advances or is it the same? Uh, it's pretty much the same. The only thing that I, that really stands out from when I first came out to now is, is the shock program got more technical than, than when it was when I first came out. It's, more everybody's dyno in their shocks and rebuild them in their trailers as the night goes on to, to like the cup guys do to try to get the, the right numbers they want and stuff. It, that's just the biggest part of it. And just the motor side's gotten a little bit more aggressive on stuff. But other than that, it's all pretty much the same. 
it seems like in the last couple of years, and, and I know you mentioned a little bit yourself, but like the tire situation with, you know, the way that, you know, the rules are about what you're allowed to run and things like that is it, like, what is difficult about the tire situation? Why is, you know, it, does it, are they different on a regular basis? Like, you know, are you not getting consistent looks? Like what's difficult about this tire package? Uh, it's just that it's a, it's a narrow right rear and stiff sidewall and the left rears are, are stiff. It doesn't grow like the old Hoosiers used to. So it kind of just stands the car up and doesn't like lay down like everybody was used to back in the Hoosier days and even when we ran the Goodyear stuff. So it's it's just hard to get the, the feeling that the driver wants to make him comfortable and, to, and still trying to get the car to go forward. It's just that's the biggest part is just the construction of how the tires were were made to for a spec tire we had so it's it's everybody's on the same field so we all got to deal with it but it's it's just a hard field to try to get used to you're doing stuff that you never would have ever imagined thought you did as a race car 10 15 years ago to all of a sudden now it's it's way different than what you did back then we are what four races into the season now and and you know i'm sure you guys probably get together in the off season and talk about kind of what's to come but you know, what's, what's your goal? You know, what, what are you and Craig's goals for this season? Like, you know, what are you trying to accomplish? Where, you know, where do you think you can get by the time we get back to world finals here in November? Uh, we, we try, we want to get a few wins throughout the year and, and run top 10 every night would be nice, but we know it's, it's hard how it is in competition. And, and we'd like to be in the top eight in points, but it's like you said, it, it's hard. The competition we have out here right now, everybody's stepped up their game the last few years and, and, it's just hard to just to, to race so close and the times you you could be off a tenth and you'd be five, six spots back. But but no, we wanna win a few races and run top eight points and we'd like to be top ten every night racing. Uh, I, I want to kind of ask you a, a, a few kind of a little bit of quick fire questions, but uh, just right off the top of your head, what is your favorite thing about your job? Uh traveling. Traveling. Yeah, so, I can and, travel. And then on the flip side, what's the thing you don't like the most about your job? Dislike? Yeah, like what, what, what is the thing that just drives you crazy about, about being on the road or, or being a crew chief or working on sprint cars or whatever that is? Uh, just you're always constantly worried and, and thinking about stuff, trying to make sure everything's right, trying to make sure the truck and trailer's good, the race car is good, and, and your crew guys, and you got hotel rooms, your insurance on the truck's good. And, the stressful part of the business side of everything pretty much. How do you guys break that stuff down? Is it like, do you do that? Do you and Craig do that? Like, how does that work when you, when you especially talk about finances and keeping the books and organizing all of that stuff? He does all the end of the year stuff, the taxes, and I do everything else throughout the year. I do make sure all our truck paperwork's done and, and got hotel rooms when we want them and, and the t-shirt trailer is good and we got tires on everything and, and make sure I have enough parts ordered and, and fuel and stuff when we go racing and it's just he does he helps out some when i need him to but majority of the time like it's just me throughout the year and then he does all the end of the year stuff that i would hate to do the taxes so. who's a better truck driver you or him uh me, me. <laughs> uh, he's 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 had his his permit a few times and, and never fully went through and got it got the, the cdl so Oh, he doesn't have a CDL. What is he? Does he drive the yeah. the 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 t-shirt trailer around? Yeah, he drives a t-shirt truck around. Oh, so. okay, okay. I was gonna say, I, I you know, my dad drives trucks, so I, I you know I know how that feeling is. It's like, you know, are you gonna are you gonna climb into the sleeper and be comfortable enough to go to sleep, or are you uh, <laughs> are you gonna yeah, keep one eye open? At times, when when he's had his permit and stuff, and, and before and even drove, right? Other people drive. Usually, I drive all the time because I don't like you like you said, your dad. don't trust anybody, so. So I'd rather drive until I can't, then I'll sleep. And then usually by the time I'm getting the back, I'm passed out and can't really hear nothing. So I love it. What, uh, what's your guys' kind of process look like through the year? Or, you know, are you, are you kind of like you guys leave the racetrack, get your car wash in and then sleep? Or you get your car wash in, immediately get on the road and then try to get as far down as you can? Uh, it depends on how far we got to go overnight. If it's, if it's somewhere where we got to go five or six hours, we'll try to drive. A little bit get the car washed drive a little bit get to where within an hour or two if we race the next day to to get to the track to start working but if we don't race the next day we'll either drive somewhere to a hotel and 
can get a room and, and sleep and then get up in the morning and drive or, or we'll go back home. So it's, it's basically how, how we do it at night. I, I know it's always kind of a scramble and, and difficult to get crew guys and, and to find people to stick around and things like that. Has that gotten harder as you kind of gone along in your career? Has it gotten easier? What do you think? Uh, it's gotten way harder. It's, it's the, the money that, that teams have to spend is, is not as much as these, I say the kids, like you tire guys and stuff, think they should be making. Back when I started, I was making 300 bucks a week. And it was, that was, I was 18. That was plenty of money for me. And, and now guys want seven, eight, 900 bucks a week to, to be the third guy on the team. And it's just, it's gotten harder and work ethic for, you can't find anybody to put the hours in that we, that we do on race day and the next day. It's hard to find guys now. Is it like, I mean, are you, when you do need a crew guy, are you know, are you looking at certain parts of the country? Are you looking at Pennsylvania or Ohio? You know, are, are you looking at those sprint car heavy places trying to pull people maybe in from the local tracks? Or, you know, what does that process look like when you do need somebody? Uh, yeah, you can. It's easy, easier to find somebody that knows what they're doing to, to help you out so you don't got to kind of train them from ground zero to start. But it's, Sometimes it's not bad to get a guy that hasn't really worked on one or, or, or done it for years, so that way you can kind of show him how how you do stuff, I guess, for since he's working with you to to help you out. It's not necessarily the right way, but it's it's what makes it easier for for my help, my life, working on a car, having somebody else do it. But it's it all depends on on how how hard they want to work, I guess. When you look back over your career and kind of the influences, you know, you've worked for some pretty serious guys, some pretty accomplished guys, you know, but you know, who's, who's one name that you could point out and say like, you know, that, that was a guy that taught you a lot or somebody you emulate or, you know, somebody that you would even want to be like now. Oh, I'd say I worked with like Jimmy Carr and Lasoski and, and them and, and, but being down at, down here at Steve's with, Jimmy's taught me a lot and, and being with Scott Gerken doing even with him building the motors, he's taught me a lot about the motor stuff and then doing the cars and, and the shop stuff. But there's a, there's a handful of guys that have helped me out throughout my career to, to help me where I'm at today. And, and I can call them, well, a few of them I can still call in and talk to them and, and get advice and, and throw questions off them if I need help. But it's, there's a bunch of them that have been there for me. That's what I was going to say, you know, is, is Jimmy Carr like a guy you, you call up and say, Hey, I'm struggling right now. What do you think? Or, you know, how does it, 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 it like, is there a network of people like that for you? Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a few people I can call that, that have, that will help me out and kind of bounce ideas off. Like Bonsai, he's, he's, I've done it a few times to him the last three or four years since he hasn't been out here and struggling and telling what's going on. And he tells me what to do and, and it seems to work. So I can call him anytime and he's always, he always answers. And, and it's just nice to be able to have somebody like that, that will answer. And you don't feel like a, like an idiot, I guess, calling and asking a question where you, you should know of it. You should know the answer because you worked on the car, but it, it's just nice to be able to call somebody and not treat you like a, like a, like you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'll let you go here. Uh, I certainly appreciate the time today. I do want to ask, though, you know, as, as long as you've been doing it, if, if you could go back 15 or 20 years and, and you know, meet Mikey Kemper as a, as a young kid, a young crew guy, what would you tell him? Like, what's that piece of advice you would give him about, you know, how to make life a little easier for the next 15 or 20 years? Uh, just, just keep your head down and work hard and, and be polite. And to anybody you meet, you never know where they can take you or, or who you're talking to, no matter what they look like, you just got to show courtesy to them and, and be polite to them as much as you can. I love it. Well, Mikey Kemper, I certainly appreciate the time today and uh, good luck this weekend and, and good luck for the rest of the season. Thank you. I appreciate it.